Hi, I'm Christy. And I'm Ezio. Welcome to the QESB Election Night Special Vlogs. This episode we want to talk about our leader impressions, and in particular David Cameron's impressions from our focus group research across Britain. So what we did in our focus groups was we asked people to brainstorm quietly um, what their impressions of the seven party leaders were, and then based on those impressions, we asked them to code them as positive, negative, new or neutral. And in this little episode, we want to go over what people's impressions of David Cameron were. So just like we did in our focus groups, we're going to go first to the positives, then the neutrals, and then the negatives, and then say a few things about how we think this all kind of maps onto his personality and his character. So I'm going to start with the, the positives. And Edzia, do you want to give the audience a little idea of the positive associations people across, the country, across Britain had for David Cameron? So David Cameron was seen as being intelligent and clever, and these were seen as his positive attributes. Um, uh, quite a few participants said that he sounded like a leader, so he's a prime ministerial. Um, they noted that he was polished, he was well-spoken, and they also highlighted that, some of them highlighted that they felt he was hardworking. Yeah. In terms of the neutral associations, things that came across in the neutrals were things about his status or his economics. So people referred to him as being posh and privileged. Other people also said he was quite charismatic, but they didn't necessarily see that as a positive, it was just something about his personality. And on the more negative side of that, um, posh and privileged was things like tough, uh, again, as neutrals for some of our participants. And then the final category was the negatives. negatives. Yeah. And um, unsurprisingly, we had quite a few negatives. Um, some of them uh, referred to the way his personality came across, so they called him smarmy and smug. Um, and in fact, these were very similar to the negatives that he got in the 2010 QESB as well. Uh, we had uh, a couple of participants um, identifying him as not being like them, so that the, creating this distance between the participant and David Cameron. Uh, they highlighted that he was not in touch, that uh, some of them felt he was fake or duplicitous or came across as such. And um, interestingly, some of them said that he was smooth, but in a negative way, so he wasn't cool smooth. Yes. He wasn't like Obama cool smooth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. And I think in terms of putting this together as a whole package, uh, there were several people during the debates who pointed out that first in the first debate that he participated in and then in his question time appearance, he doesn't answer questions. That was certainly something that characterized people's reactions to him watching him live was that he didn't answer questions directly and then he gave sound bites that had been the product probably of his handlers or a PR firm that he had prepared these answers in advance and was giving them out. And so I think that in terms of his presentation, people did see him in the role of Prime Minister and that gave him a certain amount of authority and presence on the stage, but they were very frustrated with his slick answers and his avoidance of answers. And this came across as making him a little less genuine. And then another big thing that we found all over our, um, in England, Scotland and Wales is this notion that he's not like us, that he's not a common person, that he has no idea what it's like for real people who struggle, that he's in this eaten class of privileged people who exist in a bubble that doesn't connect at all to working people's lives. Yeah. So I think in terms of, you know, what he could do better in future is I think he actually does need to spend some time with ordinary people and start to speak their language. Now we'll yeah. see later on with Nigel Farage for all the problems that he, they have with his policies, he does come across as being more like the average person. And I don't can't really think of anybody in our focus groups who felt like David Cameron understood their lives or understood where they were coming from. Yeah, and even conservative um, partisans didn't necessarily comment on the fact that they could identify with David Cameron. They would say that they kind of understood the policies and mm -hmm. they supported the policies, but there was no connection with David Cameron as such. Right, they would say, you know, I agree on, on issues like Europe and being concerned about the role of Europe, or I agree with the deficit reduction program that's been in place and I think we need to keep going with it. So they were identifying far more with conservative policies than the conservative leader. Yeah. Right. So for more on the uh, quality of election night study of Britain's uh, special vlog, next up is going to be Ed Miliband. And I should also preview, we're also then going to talk about Nick Clegg and Nicola Sturgeon, 
Natalie Bennett, Leanne Wood, and the final video will be on Nigel Farage and how he performed in the three nations. So, from me, Christy, and I too, we'll see you guys in an hour. Bye! Bye.